Okay, I think we can get started. Firstly, thank you everyone for joining in um, for my talk today. Um, a little bit about myself before we get started. Um, my name is Ria. I currently work as a software engineer at Microsoft. Um, prior to Microsoft, I have been working with um, Flipkart, which is sort of like an e-commerce platform like Amazon. And uh, I've also worked at American Express, which is a fintech company. Um, apart from that, I love teaching. I absolutely um, love teaching students about software engineering and open source technologies to tech communities. And um, I have mentored and taught over 10,000 students in the past. I also have a small platform. It goes by the name algocam.io. You can check it out as well. We actually inform and train students on relevant software engineering technologies. If they're interested in certain tech stack, but they do not have the right guidance, any kind of mentoring that they require, we do it on this particular platform. And um, fun fact, I, this is actually my third time at the Open Source Summit. I attended, I think, the first conference in 2019. I was a scholarship recipient and I was like invited to the conference. It was an all expense paid trip. I came here for the first time. And that's how I knew about this community and like, you know, what people are doing at this conference. And like, I networked, I did network with a big bunch of people at that time. And then we had COVID. So, I did make sure that the next time the ha conference happens, um, you know, uh, offline and I get to interact with people, I would definitely apply and come here again. So I did apply in 2021 again, but the conference, I think in 2020, but the conference didn't happen again. And uh, I gave a virtual talk. And today, finally, I have the opportunity to give the talk um, in front of all of you today. So yeah, uh, that's about it. Now, uh, to get started, we'll get a little bit context. We'll talk about the two types of people who are actually in IT. Those who do regular backups, right? And those who actually wish they did. So uh, this talk will actually might be more relevant for people of the second kind, right? You know, those who wish they did and now they're just looking for some platforms and, uh, you know, some ways to actually do that. I was talking to a bunch of people at the conference and, you know, um, when I uh, did tell them this is what I'm saying and the, the, the first question was, you know, what do you think I should really do? Because we did come across an issue a few days back and, you know, we had multiple issues at that time. So I was like, you know, this is the talk that will probably help you out and at least give you a fundamental idea you know, why backup is necessary and, you know, why recovery is necessary, why should you really be doing it, right? Do we, do we really have some good open source tools available for that, you know, and what could we really all do about it? So, yeah. Um, now, whenever you think about data, right? Think of data is like your favorite pair of socks, right? You never really appreciate any of them until one of them goes missing, right? Just like socks has a vanishing way of, uh, you know, an amazing way of vanishing in the laundry, data can also mysteriously disappear when you least expect it. That's where your trusty backups actually step in, you know, ready to reunite you with your precious files, photos, spreadsheet, any of your company's backed up data that you've been, you know, pretending to work on. Okay, so today what we'll do is we'll take a quick deep dive, very quick deep dive uh, on different types of backups that are existing, right? Different types of backup tools that are also existing. I will specifically talk about Bakula, which I have worked on a lot. And I will give a small overview of Amanda as well. Both are um, open source uh, archiving and backup softwares available. I'll give a small demo through screenshots, which I have also done like a backup using Bakula, using the Bakulam APIs. Uh, uh, the reason why I chose Bagula over here is because Bagula has a very good GUI, which you can actually use. Amanda doesn't really give any GUI tool whatsoever. So I like more to do with work and I, I like to work more with dashboards and, you know, less with console based interfaces. So that's why I chose this demo. We'll also talk about a few best practices that you should follow while doing backups and a few common pitfalls that people, you know, uh, usually come across. I came across in most of them and which you could avoid as well. So first, let's talk about why this backup and recovery matters, right? Uh, why does this concept really make sense? Um, both concepts are very crucial to any organization's IT strategy for several reasons, right? First, data loss statistics actually reveal that businesses regularly face, you know, the risk of data loss due to various factors. It could be a hardware failure, human failure, or it could be a cyber attack as well. Secondly, the cost of downtime that is associated with data loss is also high, right? Even when I'm working on uh, different problems, right, we come across a data loss. That's not the only problem. The problem is you have to take a downtime. You have to get your servers up and running and that uh, affects the user experience a lot. So uh, the data loss could be staggering in terms of it could be impacting your revenue, your productivity on a 
individual level and also you know the work you're doing. So finally, and also Linux systems, though they are known for their robustness, right? They are not immune to vulnerabilities, making regular backups and you know effective recovery plans, which are very um, essential to safeguard your critical uh, data and actually minimize any potential uh, disruptions and operations that you are doing, right? So um, know that whenever we are doing um, backups, right? It's always a cost to risk relation that you know companies take in mind while doing backups right the decision to implement backups is fundamentally a relation which is sort of based on that on one hand the cost of establishing and maintaining backup systems may seem like an expenditure that you may not be ready to do right now however this cost actually pales out a lot in comparisons to the potential risk of not having backups at all right you could be using you, you could be looking at data loss system failures and multiple types of downtime and thus the investment in backups is actually a good proactive measure, uh, measure that you actually use to significantly reduce the potential cost and the disruptions that could also come along with it. Now, when we talk about backups, you could choose between three different backup options available. We have a full backup, like the name suggests, a full backup will ca copy all the data into a system or a drive. You know, it will create an exact replica of the entire data set, which is a good way to go about it. But it can actually be very time consuming and it can, you know, require significant um, storage space in your systems and your offsite resources as well. Then we have incremental backups available. Incremental backups are sort of like a versioning system that you do, right? Incremental backups only save the changes that you made since the last backup. That therefore, it kind of reduces your storage spaces a lot and the backup time. But know that when you're restoring that backup, it has to also go through those multiple versions in order to complete that restoration process. So it could be a little time consuming in that sense. The third one is a differential backup. Now a differential backup actually stores all the changes made since the last full backup. So this is sort of like a hybrid backup that you do, making it actually quicker to restore than incremental backups, but it consumes more space. So this is sort of uh, what lying, um, you know, in the middle of full and um, incremental backups. Now, while doing backups, uh, make sure that you follow this three to one backup strategy. It's a very robust approach, very, very frequently and popularly used as well. When I say three to one, three stands for three copies. That means you ensure that you have three copies of data, the original one, and then you have two backups, right? This redundancy actually guards the data against any loss due to hardware failure or corruption. When I say two, two means two different media options. Uh, you know, you store these copies on at least two different types of storage media you could use like a hard drive and you know then you could use another cloud storage and diverse if you're using diverse media options it actually mitigate the risk in terms of me media specific issues that you can come across and then is you keep one offsite copy okay keep one of the cop uh, keep one of the backup copies offsite ideally maybe in a remote location or a cloud service you can also choose over here this actually pro uh, protects data against any fires or theft or, you know, anything that could affect your on-site copies, right? We ensure that there is uh, phenomena available to, you know, lead to these catastrophic scenarios and we have ensuring data recovery mechanisms in that sense. So yeah, uh, this three to one backup strategy is actually very good. I come across a lot of companies that actually use this uh, backup strategy as well. And it is uh, very compliant and it actually works like a charm. Now uh, I'll talk about Bakula, which is uh, which I mostly focusly work on and I really like. Uh, to give a small introduction, Bakula is actually a fully featured open source backup tool. It uh, it performs it is functional for multiple platform clients, not just for Linux systems. So although we do talk about Linux systems over here, it works very well for um, Mac OS as well, Ubuntu, CentOS, any types of operating systems. Um, it's highly portable. Uh, it uses 100% free open source software systems to implement a complete backup system, and it is based on uh, Bakula community versions. This is just a small um, architecture of what Bakula has. It has basically four components. It has a director, very simple, bad director, catalog, storage daemon, and your client serving the different functions. Uh, so the director, as you see in the very middle, it's basically like an architectural component that performs and does all the backup and the restoration jobs. Uh, the director process basically runs on Linux uh, distributions. You could use Red Hat, Debian, or Ubuntu. Catalog, as the like the name suggests, is like a component which is in a specific database. It is only accessible through SQL uh, updates and uh, SQL queries. The catalog basically stores different metadata, 
for all type of backup activities. The information could be stored, uh, the information that you store over here could be file names, it could be permission dates, it could be storage coordinates for all the information, uh, you know, that you're storing and some global records if you have as well. Uh, then we have a storage daemon. The storage daemon uh, is basically the one that is actually backing up your data and that is actually writing your data to different storage medias. And then you have the clients, right? You could see different clients over here, which could be latching on to these functionalities in order to uh, do the backup. So what, we, what you see over here is actually a GUI, which I downloaded, and this is the dashboard that you see. Feel free to use the console-based web interface also. It's actually very easy uh, to use that one also, right? You actually get, uh, you do actually get a bunch of extra operations that you can do when you're actually using the web interface, but I feel like the uh, GUI also looks very good, and Amanda does not provide any GUI, so that's why, I, that's another reason why I personally prefer um, Bakula over here. Just to give you like a small walkthrough, I've just taken a bunch of good screenshots which gives you a walkthrough of the entire process and how quick and seamless and um, user-friendly the entire process is. So to define a new backup job, you go to the backup, uh, you go to the job page. So if you will see over here, on the left-hand side, there's a jobs window available. You go to the, uh, you go to that option, you define a new backup job, right? And then there's this wizard that comes in for creating backup. Right, and for this demonstration, I chose the backup job option to uh, show you, which is this new wizard over here. And then um, you type the new job name. You may be writing an optional description also, right? And then you decide what you need to backup. Okay, uh, for example, I need to basically backup a bunch of files over here, right? So I will define the paths. I decided to choose the client file system over here. So I select the path in the drag and drop browser, as you can see over here. And then I could just see what all files do I need to backup. Um, once that file set is ready, I've chosen up what I need to backup. The next, set the next step is to select where you need to store or save the backed up data. Now, this could be a cloud service over here. This could be a hard drive also. This could be any storage services that you like. Then you select a storage location and you select the volume pool. And in the next step, you have some job specific options like would you want to do a full incremental or a differential backup? Bakula gives you the functionality of, do, of doing all the three different types of backups. Amanda only does full and incremental backups. So if you would want to do all three of them, you would have to choose this. And you could also define the priority of the job as well. And then on the next wizard, you can see how we are moving from one wizard to another wizard on the top. There's a bar moving. On the next page, you uh, specify when to run this backup job. Backups are usually done uh, periodically, right? Here you can choose a, set, a schedule, um, you know, when do you really want to run this job. I'll also talk about how frequently you should do this backups also. But if you do not have a schedule, right, you can choose manually also if you just want to do it um, uh, the way you like, if you want to do it and whenever you want to do it, that's how you can choose as well. And then the last wizard is basically a summary of all the values that are um, selected in the previous steps, right? And you can review all the values over here and if they all look correct, you just go and create the new job. And now at this point, your backup is ready, right? Whatever data you wanted to be backed up, there is a job that has been created for that. Now at this point, post this, what you also need to do is you need to run that backup, right? So firstly, either, like I said, you can either choose to run that job manually if you do not have a fit schedule when you really run those backup jobs, right? And if you want to do it periodically, right, there is actually a very useful capability in this window that you see right now, which is the estimate window, estimate job window, right? Uh, you can actually run this estimation to actually know in advance how much time is it going to take and how many files and how many bytes of data will be backed up, right? And how much storage it will actually take in your effective end systems, which is going to store the data in. And then after running the job, you actually move to a new view page, right? Where you can select the backup process from the client perspective. You can see the backup process from the client perspective. By the way, this works absolutely the same whenever you're using mobile also. Even from mobile, you can actually run the backups, uh, which again works like a charm. And then here you can see the backup, uh, you can see the job progress also. So there is a director who's running, who's taking care of running these jobs and the storage demon who's actually copying the data, right? So if you see these bars over here, you can see that, uh, you can see how much speed is this is taking, right? And like how much time it is going to take and what's the CPU usage on your systems right now. And that's it, your backup job's completed. So simple wizard steps that you need to follow in order to complete your backup. And it's very, very simple over here. So this is how you can actually do a backup over here.
Once you're done doing the backup, the next step is obviously you need to know how do you restore the backed up data, right? These are the two most important functions um, we use and we do using Bakula APIs, right, okay? The first is the backing up part, then we have the restoration part. People do copy jobs part also, where you want to just copy backup from one place or one um, storage pool to another storage pool, that is also a functionality available. Here I will show you how do you restore the backed up data. Okay, so Bakulam again over here provides a restore wizard also in the again the sidebar menu that you will see in the back. And then after opening it, you again see a backup client selection, uh, which backup client do you really need to restore the data from. You can select the client and then you can just go to the next step. You can see all the backups over here, which have been done previously. There is also an option to backup a specific file by a file name with or without a path. And then you select the backup and then you go to the file section on the third uh, restore wizard step. Here in the file browser, you choose the directories and the files to restore, okay? Uh, know that there is also an option that if there is a file which has four different versions, you could actually back up a very specific version also of the file that you really want over here that exists in the backups. And the next wizard basically, you know, defines the destination where we will restore or we will, you know, store our restored data. By default, the location in which you did the backup is the location uh, from which the backup actually originated, right? Is the location you actually restore the data to, but you can actually uh, change and pick up a different host as well than the original over here. And then, uh, the next step uh, just shows you, uh, it has a bunch of more, I would say, options. I skipped the fourth, um, I would say, a wizard step over here. It has just simple, some restoration policies and options if you really want to add it, right? You can do that. I usually keep it untouched and I go to the summary section uh, just uh, before to see what I'm trying to back up and if everything works fine, I just go ahead and do the restoration part. This is the view that you get when you're trying to restore. Just like the backup job, you can see that the uh, running restore job is in progress after completion. Uh, this is the, uh, there is a summary of the entire progress and you know, what uh, all has been backed up and where all it has been stored, okay? And yeah, you've performed this way very simply in a bunch of few minutes, the two most important Bakula functions most people actually use, okay? First, it's very, the interface is very simple. It actually enables the user to administer Bakula from any mobile device, okay? So this can be very crucial for cases when you're working outside the office and somebody from the organization sends a text message like, you know, hey, I actually deleted, you know, an important report file and I need it urgently. Are you able to restore it to my computer? And you could do the restoration process using a mobile phone and the same wizard steps that I just described. The second important function uh, that we get with Bakula is it's multi-user interface, right? Multiple users could have multiple, several authentication methods. You could use local user, basic authentication. You could also use LDAP also over here for organizations. And it enables companies, employees to actually use Bakulam to backup and restore their own resources, right? Without actually requiring access to other um, utilities over here. And you can customize the role-based access also and, you know, control interfaces for each group of users. Of course, these options are just the tip of the iceberg uh, regarding the Bakula capabilities. Bakula is really about being configurable, okay? If you consider all the cloud-based backup options available out there and a lot of other backup options available, although they are quite flexible, but I feel like Bakula is quite configurable in terms of what do you really want to backup, from where do you want to backup, what do you really want to backup. So it's quite configurable and you, you can use the way you like to its own uh, purpose over here. So uh, this kind of helps you give a very good view of your data also, how it's being backed up, and it definitely makes your life a lot easier in this case. Next, we have Amanda. Amanda basically, so the word stands for Advanced Maryland Automatic Network Disk Archiver. <sighs> Opens, it's again an open source archiving software. And um, it it's follows sort of like a uh, client-server model. The fundamental way of the workings of both are a little different, right? A schedule, it's sort of like a schedule-based backup that starts when whenever a server sort of contacts each client. Uh, it follows a tape scanning, uh, spanning, I would say, methodology where it divides your backup storages into multiple tapes and it tries to store data into that. If at any point of time it doesn't fit, right, it will actually split it into multiple different uh, tapes. 
One of the good things about Amanda is that um, it, it's actually a very good and intelligent scheduler, right? It'll always try to optimize the use of your computer resources across different backup runs. So it has different functionalities available wherein it tries to, you know, make sure that your backing process is always optimized and you don't have to focus a lot on the areas which you don't want to focus on. Uh, although the downside of using Amanda is that it doesn't have a GUI over here. So you only have console based options available in order to use it. Amanda doesn't work with macOS systems and you know, uh, those um, storages devices as well. So that's another thing that you need to keep in mind while um, making a choice if you want to uh, work with Bakula and Amanda. But apart from that, both are very uh, popular, I would say, uh, backing up software available. The customer support and the uh, enterprise solutions for both of them are really good and uh, you uh, don't face a lot of issues while working with them. Now, uh, to talk about a few important points while you're working with, um, I would say, any type of um, backing up software or backup solutions that you're going with, just make sure you follow these few practices, which works very well. First is you do regular data backups, okay? You ensure that there is a regular backup schedule based on the criticality of your data and how frequently it changes. For critical data, uh, you know, uh, people do daily or even more frequent backups than that as well, right? Uh, with less critical data, May, you know, make it maybe backed up less frequently in that case. And you can consider implementing versioning also uh, for important files and important um, documents as well. This sort of allows you to access the previous versions of a file in case of accidental changes or any kind of corruption that happens. Second is you do choose a secure backup storage, which I was talking about in the three to one backup functionality. Um, storing backups offsite is very, very crucial and a very good option to go to, to protect against any physical disasters like fires, floods, or any kind of theft that could happen on site. Uh, use cloud storage. It's a very good option or maybe, you know, physically storage backups in a secure offsite location and make sure you implement strict access controls and authentication mechanisms for your backup storage. Only authorized personnel should also should ideally have the access to your backups. Bakula has a very good functionality where it can actually help you to define several roles, a lot more roles than usual roles. And then you can just define very specific access a person has as and not just the access for the data, but also the certain files of backup that they can do. That's how the level of configurability you can do when you're using Bakula. When third point is you do regular backup testing. So as important as it is to backup your data, it's very, very important to test your backups as well. Okay. Periodically test the restoration process from your backups. Ensure that you can actually successfully recover from those backups and that the restored data is actually usable. Many a times it happens that, you know, people keep on doing the backups, but the moment they try to restore the backup, it usually does not work or it has some sort of corrupted uh, data or something happened that the backup didn't really work well. So make sure um, you verify the integrity of the backed up data to ensure that it has not become corrupted over time. Some backup solutions already has this inbuilt validation feature available where they do sort of test your backups very frequently to see if everything works fine or not. Then we have monitoring and alerts. That's how I like to work on it personally. Uh, you can have different monitoring tools also that actually, um, you know, alert you in case of any backup failures or any anomalies. Early detection that can actually happen uh, that can actually help you to address issues before they become more critical. I, Bakula also do have a, uh, some plugin functionalities available where you can set up monitoring and any type of logging that you would really want in order to make sure it works fine. And then make sure you have a disaster recovery plan. Like you do, um, you know, backups and like you do uh, disaster recovery plans everywhere, right? You make sure that um, you develop a comprehensive disaster recovery plan that, you know, outlines how you respond to different types of data loss scenarios, right? And you include details also about, you know, who is responsible, what are the communication procedures and everything along with it. And yeah. To uh, sort of talk about a few common um, pitfalls also over here that you avoid. The first is how you rely solely on one backup method. Okay. Do not do that. Do not fall into a single point of failure scenario. Depending on only on one backup method, right, it can actually lead to a single point of failure. If that method fails or if anything becomes compromised, you risk losing all your data. Okay. Apart from that, implement multiple backup method techniques, right, such as local uh, backups, offsite backups, cloud backups, have all three of them just to in case you are recovered from all of them. This sort of does include a little bit of redundancy and in increases the chance of data recovery uh, in various scenarios. 
inadequate testing, which I, I think just focused very um, heavily upon uh, right now, that failing to actually regularly test your data can result into a very unpleasant surprise during loss of any event. Ensure that you can successfully recover data from your backups, right? And then you ignore, uh, Sometimes we ignore data retention policies. Know that how much data do you really need to backup? If it's if you're keeping too much data for expanded uh, extended period of time, it can lead to a lot of storage inefficiency and a lot of increased uh, cost. What you can do a good thing is you could have certain cron jobs running, which you could see how recently did you access a particular backup file or a data. And if there's a, a particular time that has passed and that's a particular benchmark for you that you didn't access the data, maybe that's a good time to let go of that backup files as well if you don't if you're not really going to use them anymore the idea being to define clear data retention policies about how do you really need to back up and for how long do you really need to back up. For example, at uh, Microsoft, we do work a lot on the customer data. For example, we are dealing with um, you know partners who are selling Microsoft products and who have a lot of uh, purchase orders, invoices, right? So we have a big reporting platform available. For us, we actually touch data which goes back 10 years, 20 years, 30 years as well, because that's how the agreement works with the different um, tools and the Microsoft suits available. So for us, this option does not really make sense a lot because we are not able to, um, you know, let go of any kind of data that we might not feed it because everything is connected in terms of user experience. But yeah, there are cases where, you know, a, a software is just a video streaming platform, right? Uh, where people come and it's sort of like a networking tool where you don't really have a use case where you want to store the data for a very long period of time. In that case, it's a good option to avoid and have good data retention policies. And the last one is understanding the bandwidth and the storage need. This kind of goes back to the cost to, you know, risk relationship, which I talked about. And don't underestimate the bandwidth uh, and the re storage requirements that you have for backup, especially in cloud environments, which could be really, really expensive. That could lead to a lot of performance issues also and incomplete backups. Regularly assess your backups and know how much resources and how much allocations do you really need to do in order for based on your criticality of your data. And yeah, this kind of sort of helps you to understand all these points are something that I came across very frequently and I worked on and I felt that, you know, these are the points which become very, very crucial when you're working with data, right? And especially how do you try to understand that data? Because data as in its sense could not just go through in terms of your, if you're accessing it from database. For example, I work on a data platform team where, you know, uh, the data is not just present in our source databases. It is also going through multiple um, pipelines. We are running through each ETL pipelines, right? We are, we are harnessing and massaging a lot of data and then presenting it to the end users, right? So not just at the source databases, but at a lot of middle stages also, we want to make sure that our data is always backed up. And if any stage sort of leads to a loss of that data, we want to recover it from that particular stage itself. So yeah, that's how I came across and I realized the importance of um, uh, data backups, recoveries, and how do you know, we really uh, work on this and what view should we really have on that. So I hope this gives you a good idea on about a very good um, open source tool available, Bakula and Amanda. I do not see a lot of people very frequently, um, you know, kind of coming across data backups tools and, you know, they're only thinking about it when they know then there's some issue that we come across in. But it's also important to know that we sort of introduce this method a very early into our stages to avoid any issues. And we think about backups and recoveries right when we are starting planning about our applications and our work and all of our important data that we work in. And yeah, that's it. That's how I wanted to talk about and give you all an overview about um, backing up and restoring your data related to Linux systems. Thank you.